Hello everyone, today I'm going to tell you about the 2007 British fantasy film called Flawless. Beware of spoilers ahead, so take care and look after yourselves. At the beginning of our story, we see a hand bathing in mud and finding something resembling precious stones. These stones are actually uncut diamonds. After this, we are brought to bustling London, where we notice an elderly lady named Laura Quinn sitting in a cafe. Guests, including a young newspaper reporter named Cassie who hopes to write an article about the woman, come to her. As they talk, Laura takes out a 168 carat diamond with 58 facets. Cassie is amazed by all this, Laura hands the diamond to the reporter and begins to tell the story of how she stole this diamond from a London diamond company. After that, we move to London in the 1960s. Laura is a young businesswoman, she comes out of the building of the London Diamond Corporation, where she works as a manager. She greets an elderly janitor named Mr. Hobbs, and we see a man named Mr. Milton, followed by two men with small carts. Milton opens a large vault, after which they load the carts with diamonds and take them to tables where they are checked for defects. Outside, the company owner, known as MKA, and his son, Oliver, approach the building. At this moment, many protesters swarm to them. As they enter the office, the directors and employees wait to discuss the latest news about a hundred diamond miners who died in the mines in Africa. Laura reports to MKA that the Russians are likely to sever ties with the company due to negative information in the press. MKA announces the appointment of a new managing director, who will be Peter Bolin. Laura is not chosen because the company will not break tradition and will always appoint only men. Later, we see Mr. Hobbs, the janitor, entering Laura's office. He tells her that in his opinion, people should be bold and take what they want. Laura then leaves the building as usual and goes home. The next day in the corridor, she meets a man named Harold Reynolds, whom she met at Oxford University. He gives Laura his business card and offers her a job at his company. The next morning, she finds her inspiring note and a negative response written below. She also finds a movie ticket with the time of the show on the back. Curiosity gets the better of her and during her lunch break, she goes to the cinema. When Laura enters the theater, Mr. Hobbs appears and offers her a seat together. The girl loses patience, but the man says that he overheard the director's conversation about her job soon coming to an end. He suggests a plan to steal enough diamonds to become rich, but not enough to be noticed. The woman is unsure whether to believe him or not and warns Hobbs that he won't get away with this. Later at work, Laura finds a letter of dismissal. Then she decides to finally set up a meeting with Harold Reynolds. When Laura goes to the restaurant to meet him, he tells her that his company cannot offer her a job because she is not competent. It seems her company has spread bad rumors about her. That same night, the girl falls asleep on the sofa, and dreams of the guards at work catching her trying to steal diamonds from the company. The next evening, she goes to the dog races to find Hobbs. There, the woman asks him how he can rob the company. Hobbs tells her that he has a plan. In his apartment, the man explains everything he has thought out. Since the vault codes change weekly, he will need Laura to find records of how to open the safe. They are in MKA's office, which is in his house. He tells Laura that when she goes to entertain the Russians at the event, she will have to find the codes in MKA's house. He also explains that he can take all the diamonds they need in his thermos, so they both can comfortably retire. On the night of the event, Laura talks to MKA's deputy, Mr. Jameson. He tells her how Sir Sinclair, the director of an insurance company, was once involved in a medical insurance scandal but was not held accountable. After that, MKA introduces them to Dmitrev, the head of the Russian Diamond Administration. Dmitrev invites Laura to dance, and later our heroine goes upstairs to MKA's office to find the security code. Laura hears footsteps and quickly hides, and at that moment MKA enters. He opens a small safe, and the girl watches him, memorizing everything needed to open the safe. As soon as the man leaves, she opens the box and finds the security code. The next day, Laura sees a man installing surveillance cameras in the corridor. Later, she meets Hobbs and tells him that eight surveillance cameras are being installed. She tells him that the camera turns on and off for 60 seconds at a time. He assures her that he has enough time to enter and exit the vault. Then Hobbs mops the floor in the security room and times the camera. In the restroom, he looks at his stopwatch and makes his move. Watching the ticking hand, he runs to the vault and enters the code. 
Meanwhile, Laura calls the security room to distract everyone and give Hobbs a little more time. The man looks at his stopwatch again, then opens the vault and quickly hurries through the corridors, staying out of the camera's view. The next morning, Laura watches Hobbs as he leaves work, but one of the clerks calls him back inside. Hobbs has to unlock the toilet before he can leave. After that, the man finally returns home and pours tea from his thermos into the sink, but, unfortunately, there are no diamonds. The next day, all the diamond sorters leave for their homes. Laura goes down to the lobby and finds Jameson in a panic. She immediately goes to the ladies' room, and at that moment Mr. Milton calls her to bring her to the vault. When she enters, she can't believe her eyes. The vault is empty. Mr. Milton shows a man named Finch the building plans, telling him that the only way to the vault is through the door. Now MKA tells the entire management that there will be no police investigation, as publicity will destroy the company. Sinclair introduces Finch as the chief insurance investigator. Laura blames Hobbs for everything in the lobby, but he assures her that everything is fine. Later, the girl goes to MKA's office, and we see a man named Boyle sending a letter to MKA about purchasing some inventory. Apparently, he is unaware of the identity of his client and the contents of the letter. At that moment, the man is called away for a phone call, and while he is away MKA reads the letter, which states that the diamonds can be bought back for 100 million pounds sterling. Before leaving, he hands a small package to MKA. The man opens the package, which contains a huge diamond known as the South African Star. Later, Finch asks Laura several questions and notices that she is very nervous. The next morning, Laura suggests to Jameson to work with Finch to help in his investigations. The girl finds Finch, and they go down to the shelter together. He tells her that the surveillance cameras are not very secure, and there is a 60-second gap in time. Finch also explains that there was no break-in. She suggests that the thief must have known the combination. After that, we see Sinclair offering MKA a check for £5 million to buy enough diamonds to stabilize the trade situation. But MKA wants all the diamonds back right now. When Finch suggests that MKA son Ali might have been involved in all this, the man loses his temper and threatens to ruin Sinclair if he doesn't pay the ransom. Now we see Hobbs in the underground tunnel. Laura tells him that they must return the diamonds and make a deal, but he explains that if she does, they will end up in prison. After this, Laura looks at the building plan when Finch comes in to take her fingerprints. He says it's just a formality, then asks her to accompany him while he questions Hobbs. Finch gives Hobbs various questions, and at this moment our detective's assistant calls him away. Before Hobbs leaves the office, Laura tells him they must negotiate, or they will go to jail. Hobbs explains that it's a matter of 100 lives in prison. Afterward, we see Finch looking at Laura's fingerprints and comparing them with some from MKA's house. In her free time, Laura opens Hobbs' locker to find the key with the diamonds. Later, she joins Finch for a drink in a nearby bar. In the London Diamond Building, journalists arrive after Sinclair warns them that the diamonds have been lost. Chairman Gottfried tries to contain the press, and MKA descends the stairs, at which point he suffers a heart attack and falls to the floor, dying. Back in the bar, Finch asks Laura how she managed to take all the diamonds, but she assures him she's not that smart. At that moment, Finch is informed about MKA's heart attack, and he leaves. In the ladies' room, Laura drops a diamond and her earrings into the sink drain. She removes the pipe from underneath and suddenly realizes how Hobbs must have taken all the diamonds. Laura takes a flashlight and enters the underground drainage system. As she walks through the tunnels, Hobbs appears with a flashlight. She threatens to expose him, but he pulls out a gun and tells her she'll stay there. Laura knocks the gun out of his hand, then runs through the tunnel, trips, and falls. Then we see a huge diamond on the floor, which she puts in her pocket. Hobbs tells Laura that his wife's cancer could have been removed, but the insurance company made her wait too long for surgery. By that time, the cancer became too aggressive. Sinclair was the chairman of the insurance company that delayed the surgery. And so Laura realizes that Hobbs is taking revenge on Sinclair. The man tells the woman that Sinclair took away the only thing he truly loved. After that, we see Gottfried informing Sinclair that he agreed to pay a ransom of 100 million pounds sterling. Sinclair goes to the office and shoots himself. Laura tells Hobbs how she dropped the diamond down the sink, then figured everything out. 
Now we see flashbacks of Hobbs periodically taking all the diamonds from his work trolley to his workshop. Ollier receives a message that the ransom has been paid, and a note from Boyle shows the location of the diamonds is empty. After that, we see Hobbs pouring the diamonds down the sink, and the South African star was actually at the bottom of the toilet that Hobbs was asked to clean. Now the man points the gun at Laura and pulls the trigger. To her surprise, the gun is not loaded. He says it doesn't matter now because the money will be paid. The man turns off his flashlight and leaves. Laura walks through the tunnel and looks into every corner. Eventually, she finds all the diamonds piled up at the end of a drain. After that, we see the man carrying boxes of diamonds out of the underground tunnel. Laura sits on the steps, wrapped in a blanket. Finch tells her that he lost 5% of his fee because she found the diamonds. Laura is about to confess, but Finch stops her at the last moment, saying he wouldn't want her to spend the rest of her life behind bars. The man says goodbye and leaves. Laura remembers she has a large diamond in her pocket. She decides to keep it for herself. After that, we see Ollie informing the press that the diamonds were not stolen, then allows them to photograph all the vaults. Demeter Every signs a contract to secure his relationship with the company. Returning to the present day, Laura talks again with Cassie. She tells her that she left the company a month after receiving a letter from a Swiss bank informing her of a transfer of 100 million pounds sterling to her account. Laura hands Cassie her manuscript for publication, hoping it will inspire other women. In the end, we see Laura donating all the money to worthy charitable organizations worldwide. Cassie reads the last words of the manuscript and sees it says, It's a wonderful world. You'll either be giving or taking. She goes outside to find Laura, but she's already gone. Guys, what do you think about this video? Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. Leave a like to help promote the channel. Don't forget to turn on notifications and subscribe to stay up to date with new videos. Looking forward to seeing you next time.